Have you ever been out in the woods and you noticed an old rotting log that's fallen apart in square chunks? You ever wonder why that particular log is like that? Here's another one. Have you ever looked up information on a mushroom that you're interested in and one of the first things you read is that it's a white rot fungus? Maybe you wondered what that really means? Well, this video has you covered for both scenarios. By the end of this, you're going to know in basic terms why some rotten logs look like they're breaking into square chunks and some don't, and you're going to have a good fundamental understanding of what it means to be a white rot or a brown rot fungus. Let's lead right off with the answer. Brown rot and white rot refer to two different strategies that wood-eating fungi use to break down wood. About 90% of wood-eating fungi are white rot fungus, like this one here. They break down the wood by colonizing the wood with their mycelium running throughout it, and then they release enzymes from the mycelium that break down the cellulose and the lignin in the wood. It's a relatively slow process, and the rot spreads as the fungus spreads. And the end result is soft, bleached-looking, sort of punky wood, like this. So let's take a look inside my grow chamber in the living room where I've currently got some oysters growing. These oysters are breaking down sawdust mainly in one of our DIY kits, but in the real world these would be growing on a dead tree, a log, uh, or a stump. Oysters are all white rot fungi and in fact all of the commonly grown mushrooms are white rot fungi. And here's an old shiitake log, so old that it's pretty well totally broke down. You can see it's just crumbling. So shiitakes obviously uh, are also a white rot fungus. They're leaving fibers in here, they're breaking it down, but it's not getting the square chunk appearance. On the other hand, brown rot fungi, which only account for less than about 10% of wood-eating fungi, uh, have an outsized impact. This is partly because these fungi mostly affect coniferous wood, like pines, and most of our houses are built out of coniferous wood. The other thing that's interesting and concerning to people who live in houses is that brown rot seems to not break down wood directly with enzymes released from the mycelium, uh, which is in contact with the wood, but rather it breaks down wood through the action of water-soluble free radicals like hydrogen peroxide that can quickly spread along the wood. So the cellulose is broken down and the lignins are altered in a way that alters their color, leaving that reddish brown wood behind, uh, and it dramatically reduces the strength of the wood, which less, lets it easily break across the fibers as it shrinks, and that leaves that characteristic square chunk appearance, gives it the common name cubicle rot. So back to your house, if you get this sort of fungus infecting your structural wood, it can pretty quickly compromise the structural integrity in a way that's not really repairable. So the main fungus that causes the brown rot in houses is called Serpula lacrimans. Serpula means snake or crawling or creeping. Lacrimans refers to tears, maybe because it'll make you cry if you get it. Um, but the main one that you'll be familiar with as, as a mushroom hunter is chicken of the woods, is a brown rot. Um, which is an unusual one because it doesn't really go after conifers. That's mostly on broadleaf trees. So let's review. White rot and brown rot are two different ways a fungus may digest wood. Most wood-eating fungi are white rot, including all the commonly cultivated wood-eating fungi. They leave behind soft, bleached-looking, punky wood that is still somewhat fibrous. Brown rot fungi are more uncommon, mostly affect conifers, and attack the wood in a way that allows rapid spread and dramatic structural damage, leaving behind reddish-brown wood that is broken into square chunks. 
Pretty cool, right?